Have you ever seen how cute the babies of Madagascar's largest predator can be? And what about fluffy birds with heart-shaped faces? Or the clumsy little pangolins? No? Then you've missed a lot. This is Smart Pizza. And in this episode, I will show you the cutest baby animals you've never seen before. Let's go! Pangolins The name of these cuties translates from Malay as curling up into a ball. And really, in case you didn't know, they can do it as cool as no one else. When threatened, these animals curl up into a giant, artichoke-like, completely impenetrable ball that only the largest cats, like tigers or leopards, can unroll. And even when they do, it usually doesn't end well, because pangolins emit a foul-smelling liquid. Why is this ball so dense? It's because of the hard keratin scales that cover almost their entire body. The scales, which are up to 20% of their body mass, are mobile and their edges are pointed for extra protection. No other animal in the animal kingdom has such protection except the pangolin. The pangolin itself is of average size, its body length usually doesn't exceed 35 inches, and it weighs up to 77 pounds. In addition to the great defense, it's also able to attack because, not for nothing, Mother Nature has endowed it with long claws suitable for ravaging anthills. Since birth, pangolins have poor eyesight, although in practice it doesn't prevent them from seeing. The point is that they're active mainly at night. Speaking of activity, have you realized what this animal looks like? Well, yes, of course, it's a copy of an anteater, only in armor and more advanced. And if you now think that they have a huge difference because of the tongue, then do not jump to conclusions. The pangolin also has something to surprise us. Its tongue runs through almost its entire body, and the huge muscles that power this doomsday machine are all along the length of its body, ending only at its butt. In addition to having a sticky tongue, this huge device also smells delicious. So, when the pangolin drops into the burrow of termites or ants, they themselves run towards it instead of hiding in panic from the strange thing. It's funny, but when the pangolin is full, it decides to save the place that satiated it until the next day. To do this, it seals the entrance with saliva so no one can get out of there and returns in 24 hours. Also, this monster has teeth right in its stomach. They replace the teeth in its mouth. It seems that this is not the cute creature it was just a moment ago, but a full-fledged killing machine. But everything immediately changes when you cast your gaze upon a young pangolin. Their babies are just angels. They're born well-developed, but their scales are soft and harden only after a few days. The babies eat on their own after a month. At first, the babies cling to their mother and literally become its tail, observing and adopting the rules of life. Barn Owl and now let's talk about one incredibly interesting feathered creature that inhabits almost all continents except Antarctica. This bird has a bunch of features that are common to most owls. First of all, great eyesight. The barn owl is a nocturnal inhabitant, and all its main activities, including bloody massacres of frogs, reptiles, and vampires – well, I mean bats – take place under the cover of night. Because of this, these birds have completely lost their color vision. But their black and white eyesight in the style of old movies is absolutely perfect. Spotting a tiny rodent at a distance of 3,000 plus feet somewhere among the bushes is as easy for them as it is for you to read the title of this episode right now. But that's not the end of their superpowers. For example, the barn owl has great hearing. Therefore, it will not only see a mouse in the distance, but also hear its heartbeat and even the presence of babies in its womb. It can do this for several reasons. The first is the shape of its head. The ears are not symmetrically located, which increases sensitivity and makes the sound more voluminous. By the way, here's a fun fact. If you look into the ear of a barn owl, you'll see the opposite side of the eye. It seems that they're cute and skillful creatures that do not need anyone's help, but this is not the case. For example, because of the strange shape of their legs, barn owls do not know how to build nests. They solve this problem very simply. They organize a raid and capture the nests of crows. That's why there are constant conflicts and battles between these two birds. Although, for me, to be honest, it's a bit surprising that crows give them a fight. 
After all, it's hard to even see barn owls. Their plumage is arranged in such a way that any air resistance is instantly damped by specially designed feathers, which makes the flight literally silent. But barn owl chicks deserve special attention in all the fuss and battle. They're born without knowledge of this terrible world, and that's why they look so beautiful. The hatched chicks are covered with thick white down and are completely dependent on their parents, which feed them alternately. After 35 to 45 days, the chicks begin to leave the nest, and after 50 to 55 days, they begin to fly. They become independent at the age of three months. Then they'll begin to live separately from their parents and feed on voles, rats, hamsters, and so on. Fossa. Something tells me that many of you are hearing about this amazing predatory mammal of the Malagasy mongooses family for the first time. The fossa is a mix of an otter, a mongoose, and a cougar, seasoned with the size of a spaniel. The animal hardly reaches 16 inches in height, with a body of 27 and a half to 31 and a half inches. Although it's not much by global standards, among Madagascar predators, it's quite a good value. Moreover, the creature is at the top of the food chain. Once upon a time, these creatures could reach the size of a modern lion, but unfortunately for the fossa, humans got in the way. They reduced the population of lemurs and indirectly influenced the development of the Malagasy mongooses, because lemurs were the basis of their diet. The principle of their reproduction, or rather their mating games, deserves special attention. They look as follows. The female, realizing that it's ready for reproduction, climbs to the top of the tree all alone and settles there neatly. Apparently, from the top of the tree, the smell spreads much better. So, very soon, the males will gather under it and start fighting. As you can imagine, the winner will get the female, or rather the opportunity to mate with it. After that, the female will not need the male at all and it will be happy to bring up the baby all alone. It will take care of this cutie and teach it all its secrets, the main of which, of course, is the skill of climbing trees. On trees, the fossa feels like a fish in water, and it's actually not that obvious because the fossa has clubfoot. Sifakis These primates are found exclusively on the island of Madagascar. They're very similar to us humans in literally everything except height. They walk upright, they have similar proportions, and they have tenacious fingers. But this is one of those cases where such similarities are just a common coincidence and nothing more. The fact is that Sifakis shared a common ancestor with us. Even the small similarities that we have with each other come from a similar way of life. But don't get too upset. What's wrong with these primates living on their own? Look at how much fun they're having. With the dawn, a group of primates climbing higher begins their day with a sun bath to praise the sun and warm up after a cool night. Having saturated themselves with the energy of the sun, the primates quickly cluster together and go in search of something full of calories. They go either through the trees, which is the classic method, or on the ground dancing. This, by the way, is their usual type of walking, which looks insanely funny to us. The chief in the Sifaka tribe is not a dominant male, as we're used to seeing in gorillas and other creatures, but an adult and experienced female. Simply put, the grandmother. It knows better which path to take and which not to take, where it's dangerous to search for food and where it's not. So everyone listens to it. Despite its advanced age, it jumps with the young on equal terms. Thanks to its powerful legs, it can jump even 26-foot gaps between trees. Although it's a pleasure to watch these creatures, science still doesn't know exactly how they reproduce. It's assumed that the babies are born within one year. The first half they spend in the mother's belly, and the second half they hang on it, tasting the fruits of its knowledge of life, as well as milk. Curiously, when the babies leave their parents, they will not rush to start their own family, as most other primates do. It'll be interesting for them to have fun in the open world without ties to commitments for two to three years, after which they'll begin to think about the formation of their clan. Lack of constant stress, high activity, and balanced diet have a positive effect on their life expectancy. Sifakas can live up to 25 years. What do you imagine a sea cow to look like? Well, it probably looks like a regular cow, but it swims underwater, right? Right, maybe that's how it would be in a cartoon, but in reality, a sea cow is this. 
The creature's name is Manatee, and on average it weighs 1,100 pounds and is up to 10 feet long. Why did I pay attention to the size right away? Because it's really striking. Although the creature itself can surprise us with many other things, for example, manatees are herbivorous creatures that feed on aquatic vegetation, dwelling in shallow waters, as you understand you can't feed such a huge body with a couple of salads per day. So manatees have to eat from 110 to 154 pounds of greens daily. Therefore, in fact, their whole day consists of lunch breaks. In fact, many lazy people would envy their lives. After all, the sea cows either eat or play. They can play with their congeners and even with humans. They're not afraid of us at all and are happy to make contact with us. Unfortunately, one good company will not keep you warm. Manatees are extremely heat-loving animals. They freeze in water below 62.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why these chubby creatures constantly migrate in search of warm waters, gathering in herds of several dozens of individuals. But they're warmed not only by warm currents, but also by the very passions that are constantly running high in their communities. After all, a female can be simultaneously courted by up to 20 males. Whatever the case, and whichever the female chooses, it'll give birth to one baby weighing up to 66 pounds. The newborn will be under the care of the big mommy for up to two years. Of these one and a half years, the baby will be confined to the parent's armpit, but not for fun, but because that's where the nipple of the nursing mother is located. Sun Bear Remember this name, because this is the name of the smallest representative of the bear's family, which does not exceed 5 feet in length and weighs 143 pounds. Despite this, the sun bear is a rather stocky creature, characterized by high strength. No matter how you look at it, it's a bear. It lives in the tropical and subtropical forests of the foothills and mountains of Southeast Asia. It's well adapted to climbing trees and, being a nocturnal animal, often sleeps or sunbathes all day long somewhere in the branches, not far from its nest. Yes, yes, this bear builds its nest right on top of a pile of branches and leaves. The most suitable tree for such a nest is the Philippine mahogany. Halarctos, which is another name for the sun bear, hunts in a slightly unusual way. It has a long tongue. With it, it catches ants and termites without any problems. In addition to insects, the sun bear also eats small rodents, lizards, carrion, and does not hesitate to ravage banana plantations. But the basis is ants and termites, which you have to admit is incredibly strange for a bear. Personally, I was equally surprised by the fact that such large creatures have quite a fast pregnancy, which lasts about three months. Soon, these cuties will be born, and you'll want to take them home and take them under your wing. But don't do it. Keep your tenacious hands to yourself. These are very rare bears. Let them develop peacefully in the natural wild. The following animals of our episode are no less rare. Galicino. This is the beautiful name given to a horse breed bred in Mexico in the early 16th century. The Galicino was brought to Latin America by the conquistador Hernán Cortés, who conquered Mexico in 1519. Despite the fact that Mexico was very close to the United States, in the States this breed of horse wasn't known until 1958. However, once news of the Galicino spread, an association for the breeding of these horses was established. These Mexican racehorses have gained much love and popularity in America. It's not only in their uniqueness, but also in their diminutive size. They're only about 130 centimeters tall and weigh about 300 kilograms. Many representatives of this breed are famous for their particular fast and smooth stride, so they're very comfortable for the rider. They probably inherited their smooth pace from the Spanish horses, their ancestors. These horses are excellent, but unfortunately very few. There are about 100 left in the world, which makes the Galicino the rarest horse breed on the planet. Whitebred Shorthorn Everyone knows that horses are often used in agriculture. Although I don't think the Galicino would be suitable for this task, such rare and unique creatures are worth preserving. Also, the white-bred shorthorn is not very suitable for farming, which is nevertheless sometimes used by farmers. The British white-bred shorthorn looks like an ordinary cow, but it's in fact a real unique animal. You won't find meat from these animals in grocery stores because they're extremely rare. Scientists believe that the number of white-bred shorthorn cattle is even smaller than the number of pandas. Scientists suggest that these white beauties are at risk and that they'll soon face complete extinction. Let's hope it doesn't happen, but 
Who knows? Nature's pretty brutal. Burmese chicken. Chickens are another indispensable part of agriculture. You can find all kinds of chicken in grocery stores, but it's unlikely you'll ever cross a frozen Burmese chicken in your local supermarket. The Burmese chicken is probably the rarest breed of chicken on the planet. It's so rare and unusual that for a long time it was thought to be extinct. However, this information was later disproved. In the 1920s, several chickens were found in a small flock. Burmese chickens still exist today, though their population is critically small. The main feature of Burmese chickens is their very short legs. The birds themselves are not very big. They weigh about 500 to 600 grams. Though due to puffy plumage, they look larger than they really are. By the way, Burmese chickens are interesting not only because of their small number. This bird is one of the very few that was studied by the famous evolutionist Charles Darwin. He described these Burmese feathered creatures in his book, The Variation of Animals and Plants Under Domestication. Danish Protest Pig Darwin did not write about these piggies, but they too deserve attention. They're the next farm animals in this episode that are incredibly rare. The Danish protest pig is such a rare breed that it's on the verge of extinction. But the breed itself is quite young, it's been bred for about 100 years, and it wasn't until 1954 that the Danish protest pig was officially recognized as a breed. The color of these pigs is very striking. Once you've seen it, you'll never confuse it with anything else. It's red with a broad white cross-section. Have you seen any other pigs like it? By the way, it's because of this appearance that the breed got its name. Researchers thought that the coloration of these pigs resembled the Danish flag. It's not only these pigs that are in trouble, but also many other animals on Earth. For example, dogs, which are about to become an extinct breed, the rabbit, which is almost impossible to find, and the species of porpoise, of which there are less than 10 left in the wild. Stay tuned to see these animals and learn lots of interesting facts about them. Dragon Lee No, Dragon Lee is not a rare species of reptile, as you might think. In fact, it's a breed of domestic cat. Of course, these cats are from China. Another name of the breed is the Chinese Li Hua. This breed comes from the Chinese mountain cat, which over the centuries has adapted to live with humans. The breed is indeed an ancient one, as the first mentions of these cats date back to the first millennium BC. Despite its popularity in China, this breed is considered rare. Dragon Li cats are especially rare outside their homeland. As of 2017, there are only four purebred Dragon Lee cats in the United States, and that's in a country of about 330 million people. It's believed that it's virtually impossible to buy a purebred dragon outside of China, and in China itself, despite their popularity, these cats are not very numerous. At the same time, it's surprising that the cats themselves are quite ordinary. They don't differ much from the ordinary mongrel cats in appearance. What about dogs? There are many breeds among man's best friend, but the otter hound is certainly not one of them. They were bred in Britain in the 19th century. They were bred for hunting, so otter hounds have a strong body and long muscular legs, which allows them to withstand a lot of physical activity. Originally, they were extremely useful. These dogs hunted on otters that interfered with fishermen by eating their catch. The breed was doing very well until 1978, when England passed a law banning otter hunting. The otter hound switched to hunting mink and nutria but this was no longer the case. Due to the loss of the main specialization, the breed became almost useless and its population began to decline rapidly. Now there are only about a thousand individuals left in the world, so the breed is considered endangered. Red Wolf Things are even worse with these distant relatives of the Otterhound. The Red Wolf is a unique and very rare animal. Scientists call it the rarest member of the canine family. Once, these wolves inhabited most of the eastern United States, from Pennsylvania to Texas. In the 20th century, however, extermination and habitat destruction brought the red wolf to the brink of extinction. Their range first shrank to the far southwest of Louisiana and southeast Texas, and by the late 1970s, red wolves had finally disappeared from the wild, with only individuals surviving in zoos and kennels. The red wolf is listed in the Red Data Book as a critically endangered species. Since 1988, works to return red wolves to their natural habitat in the Great Smoky Mountains of North Carolina and Tennessee are underway. Things are progressing, but not fast enough. There are now only a few hundred individuals in the world. All the animals I've already told you about are very rare, but still not so rare that researchers cannot fully study them. The next animal from this episode is much rarer. So much so that only in 2021, scientists managed to interact with a live representative of this species for the first time. 
I'm talking about a Sumatran striped rabbit, an animal that lives on the Indonesian island of Sumatra at a high altitude above sea level. It was an accident. A male Sumatran striped rabbit was rescued by Indonesian animal advocates after it was accidentally discovered on Facebook. An anonymous user saw that the rabbit was about to be sold and contacted the National Park authorities, who tracked down the owner and seized the animal from him. As it turned out, the rabbit had been accidentally caught by a local farmer who encountered the animal on the edge of the National Park near the river. After wildlife officials took the animal away, it was safely released back into the forest next to the camera traps placed there. They hope the cameras will help scientists learn more about the lifestyle of this rabbit. Now the rare striped animal will be monitored, which is great luck because until then the rabbit had only been studied from museum specimens. And over the past 22 years, it had only been seen in the wild three times. Sumatran striped rabbits are poorly studied, but there is data on the following animal. This is the vaquita. Seeing it for the first time, you wouldn't realize that this is the animal that's considered the rarest in the world. The latest scientific estimate is that there are less than 10 vaquitas left in the world, although the reality may be even sadder. It's possible that there are only three or, for example, five individuals left. Until 1958, no one knew of the existence of the vaquita. The species was described that very year. Shortly thereafter, the vaquita population began to decline. The vaquitas were rapidly dying out and illegal fishing in the Gulf of California was to blame. Authorities tried to remedy the situation and even banned the use of gill nets a few years ago, but it didn't do much. It was too late to take action. The point of no return has already been passed, so the vaquita is inevitably on its way to becoming the next extinct species. It's possible that dolphins will become extinct because the way they treat their young is frightening and alarming. From 1991 to 1993, Dr. Ben Wilson and Dr. Harry Ross studied the bodies of dolphins discarded on the northeast coast of Scotland. The study revealed a very unpleasant detail about the dolphins. After examining the bodies, Wilson and Ross found scratches, bite marks, and internal organ damage. Initially, scientists thought that the animals were caught under the screw of the ship or in a tight fishing net. But after examining the bodies more carefully, they came to the conclusion that such marks could only be left by the teeth of relatives of the dead animals. This meant only one thing. The dolphins washed ashore in Scotland were the victims of other dolphins. Of the 105 animal bodies studied, 42 had serious injuries caused by other dolphins. This suggests that dolphins do not just attack each other, but do it very often. Babies and Young Dolphins Still remember that female dolphins suffer from harassment? While the determined attempts of females to get rid of harassing dominant males may be a manifestation of another sinister truth about dolphins. Between 1996 and 1997, 37 young bottlenose dolphins were discarded on beaches in Virginia, USA. On cursory examination, they may have appeared fine, but autopsy revealed severe blunt force injury. Scientists found injury to the head, chest, fractures, contusions, and a number of other injuries. In addition, they found that adult dolphins were to blame for the deaths of the young. One scientist observed several behavioral events labeled baby tossing in coastal waters off Virginia Beach. Baby tossing is a way for adult males to get rid of unrelated and sometimes even related babies. Scientists believe there's a direct reason for this. After the birth of its offspring, the female loses interest in mating and concentrates entirely on taking care of the baby. Only the loss of a baby can revive the interest in mating. And it's this creepy way male dolphins use for their own purposes. Speaking of mating, there's another dark surprise in the mating behavior of dolphins that's been revealed relatively recently. In 2004, a study of heritability within a population of dolphins in Shark Bay revealed that these mammals occasionally practice sexual intercourse between kin. For example, scientists observed a male known as BJA it became a father in 1978. Scientists estimate that 15 years later, in 1993, it mated with its own offspring. In addition, scientists later observed males grooming their mothers in a group of three partners. All this could be put down to exceptions to the rule or rare cases, but the statistics are disappointing. According to a study of scientists that was published in 2010, 
The incidence of incest in a particular population of dolphins is higher than a random value. This means that dolphins intentionally and regularly practice consanguineous intercourse. Every new fact and study about dolphins makes me feel more and more uncomfortable. Let's end this video with a less creepy detail about these sea creatures. This detail concerns the dolphin's smile. I'm sure you're all aware of the fact that dolphins smile kindly all the time. And if you've been to the oceanariums and all the performances with the dolphins, you've definitely seen the smiles of these mammals and all the details. You should know that dolphins don't actually smile. Although dolphins can be happy and sad, they don't possess human facial expressions. The muzzle of the majority of dolphin species is arranged in such a way that the lower jaw protrudes forward, and due to this it visually seems that the animal always has a wide smile. This feature makes dolphins cute and outwardly attractive. But in fact, an angry dolphin attacking a human will have exactly the same facial expression as one that entertains visitors at the dolphinarium. That's all, guys. Do you feel differently about dolphins after watching this video? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.